In a previous video, in which I talked about the film The Menu, I mentioned that not many movies in recent years caught my attention and gave me an interest regarding them. Well, the film I will talk about in this video is one of those films that caught my attention somehow due to the comedy and the fresh way to present a dynamic story. It has an element of unexpectedness and coincidence that makes the viewer quite interested about what is gonna happen next and see what exactly is happening with all those characters in this chaotic context. Bullet Train is a 2022 film directed by David Lynch, in which a spy, or an assassin who is in therapy, has to retrieve a briefcase from a bullet train, but the whole chaos is unleashed when he encounters different people that he recognizes them from somewhere, starting a dynamic and chaotic conflict resulted by a type of coincidence that is not quite coincidental. The film presents an incredible cast of actors, Brad Pitt, Sandra Bullock, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Michael Shannon, Hiroyuki Sanada, with cameos of Ryan Reynolds, Channing Tatum, Bad Bunny and many others. Also, if you know some of the previous Leech movies like Deadpool 2 and Atomic Blonde, you kinda know what type of film you are gonna watch. So from the get-go, you have a film with a great cast and a good premise. I could say this looks like it could be a pretty damn good movie. Well, to be honest, it could be an understatement to say it is just a pretty good movie because the film has something that really makes me forget how the time passes. And this thing happens rarely. The film is made in a way to throw the viewer in the conflict. It presents so many characters, so many narrative lines that somehow it kinda makes the viewer want to be more entangled in the film's story. Each and every single character is connected with another character one way or another, which makes the story pretty interesting to follow. The way Leech presents the story of the film is not that quite original, but I have to say that it is unique. It starts out of nowhere with a character who wants to get revenge from his injured son, who goes to a train station and bumps into a random character that apparently will be the main character of the film. Nothing out of the ordinary here. But from here on, the spider web is unveiled and we are presented with so many characters that know other characters or are used by other characters to reach and attack other characters. It is a little confusing, I know, but this thing kinda makes the viewer keep its interest in the film. The way every single character is introduced and personalized makes the story more intriguing and memorable. You know who the twins are and what is their gag, with the whole Thomas the Tank Engine discussion and the way they act. You remember the girl who manipulates everyone just to prove her father she is important, so she wants to kill him. You remember the main character who is an assassin but tries to be a pacifist and avoid conflict but thinks he's followed by bad luck everywhere. So from this point of view, Leech made the film quite well. The viewer might even remember characters that appear for a couple of minutes like the wolf or the hornet, the assassin who uses venom from a snake as her weapon to kill her targets. So yeah, even though there are many characters in the film and all of them are connected to each other one way or another, they are remembered quite easily. A thing that makes the film to be a great experience and to be one of those movies that makes the viewer to re-watch it for the fun and the action the film presents. What is quite interesting and in my opinion, the thing that keeps the viewer's interest to a high level is the way the coincidence is made and, well, planned. Because everything that is presented in the film looks like a coincidence and this is what drives the film to a level of comedy and unexpected. Having the main character, Ladybug, as a guy who is in therapy but has this dangerous job of an assassin, it already makes this great comedical premise of the film because his personality will define the rhythm of the film. What is more funny is that Ladybug is a replacement for another contractor who apparently is sick or something. So having the film from his perspective, it kinda gives that feeling that something is going down and he is not supposed to be there. And just like that, from the first 10 minutes of the film, the unexpected happens. So the moments are starting to unravel step by step, but one right after another. A guy called the wolf appears out of nowhere and attacks Ladybug. Lemon and Tangerine, the twins who are supposed to take care of the son of a mobster, are starting to go into conflict with Ladybug for their briefcase. Briefcase that is Ladybug's mission to retrieve it. A girl out of nowhere is forcing a man to kill someone or his son dies. A snake appears on the train. The son of the mobster suddenly dies. If you watch the film for the first time, yeah, you kinda agree with Ladybug. Bad luck follows him everywhere and people are hurt around him, which is ironic due to his job. The way Leech is presenting all the moments is quite... quite amazing. He does not let the viewer take a breath. He presents moment after moment after moment. 
And when it is necessary for a pose to explain something like a background context or a build-up for the next moment, Leech makes it in a very dynamic way, giving that sensation of continuous context. The unpredictability of those moments is made for the viewer to expect that something is gonna happen, creating the cycle of cause and effect, but not knowing or having a small hint of what will happen makes the film to be more fun and more engaging while the viewer is watching it. However, taking the other side of the film, the big reveal that everything is a master plan made by the mobster called the White Death to exact revenge for the death of his wife, with everyone involved in the train being at fault one way or another for her death, makes the film to be felt as a, I don't know, a very detailed setup. Of course, there are some unpredicted details, like the fact that the prince, White Death's daughter, intervenes with her plan to kill his father, or that the elder, the grandfather of the injured son, is a former mobster who was defeated by White Death and now appears to have his revenge, or that Ladybug is the contractor when in fact it was supposed to be someone else, make the whole plan to look flawed when in fact it isn't. Still, with all the details and preparations to be as perfect and controlled as it's supposed to be, the plan is busted by the unpredictable, making the whole context to feel a bit ironic and funny at the same time, thus adding to the film this whole magic of unexpected and out of nowhere, a much more natural reaction, which is a quite good thing, honestly. But leaving aside this whole chat about how unpredictable or how planned the actions of the film may look, or how it is driven by the moments, this whole thing wouldn't work without the characters and the way they are represented. After all, the moments are dynamic and fun in their own way, but the characters' personalities are the ingredients that totally make the comedy in this film to be gold. As I said before in this video, Ladybug's main presentation is this of an assassin who is in therapy, which is a contradiction with his job, thus making it funny a bit, but the way he tries to see a different path to the outcome of conflict a thing that it could be seen as sarcastic and being made in the most tense moments could be seen as inappropriate, but those interactions make the amusement of most of the moments to be, well, memorable. You have the twins who are quite antithetic and every time they have something to do or to discuss, they start to debate and escalate the discussion to a point that is quite funny and quite specific for two brothers to do that. And using the analogies with Thomas the Tank Engine makes Lemon to look initially childish, but as you progress through the film, you see Lemon as being sincere, who deconstructs all the personalities to the most basic element, which makes his character quite interesting in my opinion. While Tangerine, being the one who is mature but who listens to his brother's words when it comes to who is a diesel, makes their dynamic extremely interesting. The prince looks like a great manipulator who knows how to use her looks and personality to get what she wants, but definitely has some issues to solve regarding her family. The Elder is that one character, wise, calm, who enters in action to protect his family, who apparently has a very old connection with the White Death, making the Elder want revenge and who has a word of wisdom for anyone, every time. As a side note, I really like his explanation for the meaning of Ladybug in the Japanese culture because, in a way, it totally fits Ladybug's personality and his adventure into this whole film, having him being the one who is a target for all the bad luck for others to succeed, a thing that it actually happens if you follow the Elder's family journey through the film. The White Death, well, yes, he is ruthless, vengeful, deadly, and you can clearly see he is obsessed with control, so his death at the end of the film, which is unpredictable to him, makes his arc to be ironic on so many levels. The way David Leach presented those characters, as I said, is memorable. You remember them instantly thanks to the way they are presented. Either you are talking about the main characters or just about the side characters, you have something in your mind that makes you remember them. Sure, the actor's popularity helps a lot because you might recognize Bad Bunny due to a WWE appearance or because of his music, or Zazzy Beats if you have watched Deadpool 2 or The Harder They Fall, but leaving that aside, the characters are memorable, they are engaging and quite well performed. There are also special cameos appearances from Ryan Reynolds and Channing Tatum, that are a small addition to the vibe and the already popular cast of the film. Apparently, Ryan Reynolds' cameo is a response to Brad Pitt's cameo from Deadpool 2, which adds a more deep and comedic nod between those two movies, while Channing Tatum's cameo might be just one of the many cameos made by Leech with the help of big-time actors in his movies. 
or for a fan of cinema, it could be taken as a connection with another film from 2022, called The Lost City, in which Sandra Bullock, Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum are part of, making once more another comedic note with another film. So the actors know how to sell their characters, know their characters' personalities pretty well, and Leach knows how to present them, to make every character important in his own way, whether it's for the whole movie or is for 5 seconds, while the characters appear on screen. I mean, Leach made a character out of a bottle of water and gave it a role that turns the whole situation in the good guy's favor, using the Chekhov's gun concept. So yes, the moments and the jokes are amazing, the construct of the story is quite well made, and the characters are portrayed by the actors that truly know how to present their value and present a story at high standards. Some good ingredients for a very good movie. While I stay here in the chair and I am writing this video, I keep thinking of the way the film is made from the point of view of cinematography. There is a way the film is edited that truly gives me a feeling regarding Tarantino's early films somehow. The way Leech is introducing the characters reminds me of Japanese cinema and anime. Probably that's why I made the connection in my mind. It reminded me a bit of the first Kill Bill film. But as the story is dynamic and has moments that presents background information and then comes back to action, so is the editing of the film. There are moments when there is a breaking of the fourth wall that may not look like that and there are moments when Leech is using the effect of slow motion to add a more dramatic effect to the action. Leech is using almost the entire of the film, the Chekhov's gun concept and he is making the viewer pay attention when it is necessary through the process of editing. From the point of view of the sound, I quite like this thing he did, that he used Japanese covers to different songs in order to give a more exotic feeling to the film and to keep it also recognizable to the viewers that a certain song is used in a moment of action. I like that the sound design of this film is made from popular songs from the western culture because that feeling of similarity with Tarantino's Kill Bill goes further beyond in a way. I truly feel that the songs are chosen perfectly for their moments and being recognizable by the western audience, the viewer gets a hint to what might happen due to their knowledge of the song. As for the special effects, they are realistically made, they are believable. And I cannot to not talk about the fights because they are quite an important part of the film. The fights are quite amazing, they are perfectly choreographed, the style of fighting of the characters represent their personalities quite well. They are dynamic and funny when they have to be, they are made so well that when you are watching one of the moments, you really feel the tension and the adrenaline that makes the fight to be interesting. The fights keep you in a positive and intense connection with the film, which is expected from an action film, but the way the fights are made, it can be seen as a way to describe the character much better than be just fights that drive the story further to the end point, and this thing makes all the fighting moments to be quite interesting and entertainable. Honestly, I do not know what to say anymore. The film is well made from any point of view I am trying to see. There are so many things that I like regarding this film. It is well edited, it has a nice soundtrack. I mean, I truly think that this is a film worthy to be an example for this decade of action movies. It has everything you might want to see in an action movie, starting from an interesting story, a good premise and a beautiful way to be edited and made. Watching Bullet Train is a great experience for both the casual fans of cinema but also for the ones who really are passionate about movies. The film presents great things from actors with a great talent to many moments filmed quite well. It is a very good film to watch when you want to have fun with your friends or want to relax after a long day full of stress. I loved the film from the moment I first saw it in the cinema and I like it more and more every time I rewatch it. It's that type of film that the viewer is coming back to it with pleasure to rewatch its favorite actors. There is something that I just realized right now though. Both The Menu and Bullet Train are movies that were released in 2022. Both of them present the story of a master plan created by a villain who wants vengeance for different reasons, almost everyone who participates at the plan are connected one way or another with the villain, and both the films present the main character as this unpredictable and unexpected element that will change the course of the plan and will survive at the end. Probably it's just me or it is just a coincidence, but it is interesting to see two good movies with almost the same idea that were released in the same year. Now, I do not want to say that both the menu and bullet train are the same. No, not at all. It's just pretty interesting that two good movies from recent years have been released in the same year, released one month apart each and have a similar construct into their stories. And yes, I know that bullet train is based on a Japanese novel written by Kotaro Isaka which I really want to read now after watching the film, but still, 
Maybe it is a coincidence or not. Nevertheless, in my opinion, Bullet Train is a film that has to be experienced as it is. I think it can stand the test of time. You can watch it today and the next time could be in a couple of years and you will probably still enjoy it like you watched it the first time. It has something special that makes you want to have fun again and again. There are many words that could express my excitement regarding this film. All I can say is, without talking too much about it, that David Leitch created a great film. I really started to appreciate his style of directing and the way he presents the comedy and the irony of the world much better. If you are not familiar with his work, Bullet Train is a good film to start to discover him. Probably I will rewatch this film after I finish this video, you know, just to relax a bit. I think it is starting to become one of my favorite movies.